Hello and welcome to the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Johnstone, and I have an incredible offer for you today. What we've done is we've taken the 10 most profitable methods to grow your mortgage business that we have learned from interviewing the producers on this podcast, many of whom are doing over $100 million in volume per year, and we've packaged them together into a condensed 45-minute training where you get to learn the 10 most successful and profitable activities that you should be running in your mortgage business. Then we show you how to automate those processes with people and systems so that they run and continue to produce loan applications and new partners that want to send you business pre-booked into your calendar without you having to do any cold calls or chasing or really any work. It's a blueprint for you to be able to produce more in your business while actually working less. And you can go get that training today for free at chriswebinar.com. That's chriswebinar.com. So make sure you head over there today, grab that training for free and make sure that you watch it because the sooner you get started on implementing these strategies, the sooner you can see results and continue to grow your mortgage business. Thank you again for being here with us for this episode and enjoy another one on the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast. We are here with Dave Savage. Dave, my man, welcome to the show. Hey, it's good to be here. And I love the name Loan Officer Wealth Podcast. So uh, fired up to be here, man. Right on. Well, we'll dive right into it. You've got so much value to share with our audience. Um, first off, I want to say congratulations. So you guys just hit 300 episodes on the Win by Noon show, which is a huge accomplishment. So to you and Todd, that, I mean, congratulations. That's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, no, it's it's been a blast. When Todd and I started that mastermind uh, six years ago, we you know we had no idea that we do. I think we agreed to like twelve shows, and uh, <laughs> it was like it was it was like a specific purpose, and then we had fun. We felt like it was valuable, and here we are, you know, six years later and three hundred episodes, and super proud of it. That's crazy. Well, to all of our listeners, the link will be in the show notes below to go check that out. Make sure you do. It's a tr phenomenal resource for our industry. So, Dave, you, I would like to hear your story because um, everybody knows you today as the Dave Savage that you are, but I don't think a lot of people know where you came from and really all of the hard work that went into getting to where you are. So would you mind sharing your story, just how you got started and how you got to be where you are? So like all the way 36 years ago, getting into the mortgage business? However you would like to tell it. All right. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, and that would be a good podcast idea for anyone like mortgage stories. Like how do people get into the mortgage business? Because I, you know, I didn't plan on getting in the mortgage business, but I, I was, I did struggle in college, you know, and getting a degree was very painful for me. I, I am ADD. I am dyslexic and school was, it was brutal. It was, yeah. it was not fun. I was not good at it. And Me too. I would have graduated because my dad graduated and had his MBA. And my grandpa did. And I felt like it was a rite of passage in our family. But I I decided to, you know, well, I didn't decide to get in the mortgage business. I just fell into it. Uh, it is a longer story. But, you know, at the end of the day, I was working at Smart and Final while being a loan officer. And uh, one of the guys I worked with, Jim Garten, his girlfriend was in escrow. Her best friend was a processor for a mortgage broker, Mel Samick. And uh, I went to a happy hour. Mel drove her Mercedes. He bought drinks. And and I was like, what's that guy do? Oh, he loans people money. And I'm like, oh, I don't come from a rich family. And I want to do big things. I, I had wanted to become a real uh, a builder, you know, a, a developer of real estate. And so I like, I called him up and he hired me. And uh to make a short story long, uh, I think I made about 12 grand working really hard at Smart and Final, stocking shelves, and I, I made over 12 grand my third month in the business in a single month. Wow. And, and fell in love with being a loan officer uh, through hard work, became a you know, top producing loan officer. And then my, my big breakthrough and where I, I my, my career as a prof mortgage professional career, uh, skyrocketed is when I landed on this value proposition that my advice makes a difference. Yeah. And, and that, that was it. And 
there's there's actually a photo on our LinkedIn page right now where I I um, spoke on a stage and that was thirty six well that was thirty years ago, uh, and and then and then the mortgage coach really was born from that that value prop. My advice makes a difference, and I wanted to be able to say that to a realtor, say that to a CPA, say that to a family, and then it was just very obvious that my advice made a difference. So uh, there's the the mortgage startup story. That is amazing. And so Mortgage Coach grew truly out of just creating tools to help borrowers understand their money, understand their mortgage. And fast forward to today, you have just gone through a very significant merger with Sales Boomerang. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. No, we uh, both are, us and the, the founders of Sales Boomerang uh, brought in an, an, a private equity investment partner in uh, in December of 2021. And and that was that was the goal. Like let's let's really do something big. And I was very excited about that because data is king, and Sales Boomerang is you know they they invented the borrower intelligence space. So they you know that data to be able to predict when a consumer is uh, wants a loan, needs a loan, whether that's a refi or a purchase. You know that was what they did, and then. Think of that as the very beginning of every relationship. And, and we were that presentation, that tip of the spear to help a consumer decide which loan to get. And so the, the, you know, really the combination of data, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and consumer experience was just something that was very excited. So exciting. So we we announced that merger, um, although we, we we knew what we were doing. Uh, you know, we did the deal in December. That was the vision and mission. And then I think we announced it publicly in, I don't know, June or July. Wow. And, uh, and now we're, we're inventing an entirely new category of software called the Borrower Intelligence Platform. So uh, it's a very exciting time uh, in my world. And for loan officers, really, I think this is a, a big opportunity for mortgage professionals and lender to, to really have a technology platform that helps deliver predictable loans based on a database. Yeah, absolutely. And was there a moment for you where like, did they approach you? Did you approach them? How did the genesis of that idea start and like start to finish? How long did it take? Yeah, no, I, no, I, I, I definitely wanted to, um, you know, get the resources to execute a big vision in 2021. So I hired an investment banker, David Groves, the Caro, Love the man. I would definitely um, use him again to represent us. And he he brought us a lot of opportunities uh, in terms of uh, folks that wanted to invest and help us make a vision come true. So it was the the fact that we had a private equity firm that was also um, going to invest in sales boomerang. That was lucky, you know. Although although we did have choices, you know, we had a lot of different um, options to go. But but the way it all came down to have this kind of this new borrow intelligence platform that was that was uh, planning work and luck all coming together. <laughs> well, well, such is for the life of an entrepreneur. I think uh, the harder you work, the luckier you get, Dave. That's what they say, and I'm feeling I'm feeling that vibe right now. That's amazing. So, to our loan officer listeners who are out there, what does this merger mean for them? So they can come in, they can get, and and I apologize, it's probably not the right terminology, but there's a trigger that says, hey, this person is in need of help. This person is in a scenario where lending makes sense. And then, so from that point, how does that work? Like as a product, what's a loan officer going to experience when they come into this new experience with you? Well, I know, I know when I was a loan officer, and there was even a time where I thought about leaving the loan business and getting in the financial planning vision, you know, hmm. business, because financial advisors get paid and it's called assets under management. And, and I was also very jealous of insurance agents. In fact, my mom owned a farmer's agency and I was a little jealous of that because they get paid on a database. It's called book of business. Yep. And so, you know, what we're trying to do is for loan officers to get paid and it's called mortgages under management. And, and so that you really have this predictable and consistent revenue source based on how many mortgages you have under management. And, and so, you know, when you think of the whole concept of, of having mortgages under management, first of all, they need to be in a database so that you can take actions. 
uh, you, you do need to know what's happening, um, kind of like x-ray vision into consumer behaviors. So, you know, we, we've got every, we subscribe to every data source imaginable, um, Experian, Black Knight, uh, CoreLogic, and, you know, 20 platforms you're not aware of so that, you know, we know what someone's, you know, we don't know their exact FICO score, but we know it went up 50 points. Uh, we do know how much debt they have. You know, we do know based off of algorithms how much equity they have and how much that equity is tappable equity. We can track life events like someone had a baby, someone graduated from high school or college, someone got married, someone died, someone divorced. Uh, and then we can track all kinds of what I would call as signals, signals happening in that database. And then the industry, by and large, I mean, when most loan officers think of this, they think of, oh, someone did a mortgage inquiry and they right. got a trigger alert. So, yep. so that that is part of it. But I would say that's like the most basic alert possible. And and I don't want to say it's the worst alert because it's a great alert, but it's it's defense. Like you just got alert yep. that someone's cheating on you. Uh, <laughs> and, so, and so, you know, and you, and you need to call it and you can save a certain percentage of those, but where the real disruption takes place is when we can predict uh, yeah. that there's an opportunity. And, and we can also give loan officers um, some context, like, hey, so we just had a baby, maybe that's a good time to call and say congratulations. And, and then you know the way we're designing this is so that mortgage professionals can be more valuable to realtors because realtors can't get this data. Like even if they wanted to get credit data, they, they, they can't. You have to be an MLS licensed loan officer working for a company that you know signs up for this. So it's it's a superpower for agents. So at the end of the day, trigger alerts is the industry term today. But the 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 what we're doing is going beyond alerts, and we're watching signals, finding insights, and then what we're doing that's quite innovative. It's called a strategy, where we have this insight, like could be like cash out. They've got this credit, they've got this debt, they have this tappable equity. And now let's create, let's have the machine create a total cost analysis. Uh, we call that a strategy. So now that the loan officer can just show up and have a, a solution-based conversation with the consumer at the right time with the right strategy. Man, that's like, that's like comparing a Commodore 64 to what Google's doing out with their AI in the ocean right now. Like it's just two totally different things. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's incredible. I mean, it's a, it's a dream. I would have loved to have had this type of superpower back in the day as an originator, but uh, it's, it's really fun to create it for the industry. That is amazing. And so with you, with your top producers, like the guys, because I see a lot of the top echelon of the industry, like very excited about what's going on, super plugged in. Where are you finding that they're using the tool and getting the best results? What are they most excited about? Uh, well, I mean, you, you look at loan officers I've interviewed, like Wally Illerberry. Yes, uh, Josh I just had him on the show. Yeah, and, and they're, say that one more time. Oh, we just had Wally on the show uh, oh, two or three good. weeks ago. And, and by the way, Wally is just a poster child around this because he he is passionate and focused around building data uh, when I first interviewed him, he had about 2,000 records under management, and I and, and he has 30,000 now. In fact, I'm going to be doing a call later today, a webinar um, that's got over 1,000 people signed up, and we partnered with BombBomb, and we're going to really be breaking down what they're doing with the combination of Boomerang, Mortgage Coach, and BombBomb. But but at the end of the day, he's him and his team are super focused on how do we build this database? They have all the tools and technology, mortgage coach, home bot, sales boomerang, a video platform like BombBomb. Bomb. And, and then and then they're just doing the work. You know, they're they're managing mortgages. You know, they're calling people up for their annual reviews. They're calling people up when they get a signal, you know, that hey, uh, and hopefully the last thing, the, the signal you don't want is they ran a credit report with someone else yep. uh, for a mortgage, but you know what? You want that, but you want all these others. And so it's it's pretty straightforward on what they're doing and how they're doing it. Yeah. And they're just excited to build this residual income-based mortgage industry, our mortgage platform. Yeah. And he so he references it as building building a wealth team. And so 
he's, you know, he's big on making sure that you're doing the annual mortgage review. And, um, but can you unpack for our listeners that concept of building a wealth team? Because I think it's a really big mindset shift for a lot of people in the mortgage industry. Yeah, well, we, we, we call it being, you know, captain of the wealth team. And it's a, it's a concept that we advocate. And there's, there's two parts to it. You know, there, there is going beyond the transaction with the consumer and truly do, um, bringing ideas to build wealth with real estate to consumers. So there's a, there's a consumer message that's part of that. But then the way you execute on that on the backside is that you, you are doing more than loans for all the local referral-based professionals that help families build wealth with real estate. Obviously, the, the real estate agent is the, you know, the alpha partner. You know, they, they bring that lifestyle, they find homes, they buy homes, whether that's owner-occupied, whether that's an investment property, a second home. So, so there's no doubt that real estate agents are a super important part of that, that, that wealth team. But, but here's the deal, guys. And loan officers can be the captain because you have more data than everybody. You've got the assets of a consumer. You have the liabilities of a consumer. You have the credit rating of a consumer. And, and, and a lot of loan officers that have a great CRM, they've got a great fintech-powered tech stack. Um, you can help not only realtors, you can help financial planners. You can help insurance agents. Uh, you can help CPAs. Uh, and, and so the, the whole vision and mission is for mortgage professionals to be the single most valuable advisor to a consumer, be that captain of the wealth team, and deliver an incredible experience that helps that family build wealth with real estate. And then, and then also be an incredibly valuable resource to these, these members. Like, like insurance agents don't get these alerts. Yeah. And, and trust me, insurance agents that have a book of business they want these alerts. Uh, uh, financial planners don't have all these signals and insights in their database. Trust me, they want these signals in their database. So, and Wally gets this. In fact, I'm going to be um, in my interview with um, Shane, who's one of his team members, part of the team Wally, is Shane Sharp. Uh, he's going to be walking through like, hey, what is your script and your process to get a, a, a an insurance agent to say, oh, yeah. Here's my database. I want to get all those sales boomerang insights and I want to partner with you. And, and, and so, you know, so that's, I mean, I think that kind of described it, the, you know, be the captain of the wealth team, be the most valuable advisor to consumers. That's so it's, that's changing. That's industry changing. It's it, changing. It's, oh, it's a hundred percent. Yeah. It's, like, it's a disruptive concept. I'm so excited about this Dave, because you probably don't know this about us, but we pivoted in, we were really big on lead gen. So for a long time, I've been known as like the Google, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram guy, because we did a lot of funnels and lead gen and that sort of thing on social media. And the number one problem that our clients had is that they, they couldn't close enough deals from that lead source to make it profitable because they wouldn't make the phone calls to actually speak to the consumers. And I get it, you know, there, there maybe 5% of those leads are good, like actual borrowers, like the data that you're getting, you're getting a far better, higher qualified in market lead compared to running Facebook ads or Google ads or any of that stuff. And our big problem with our consumers is they wouldn't make the calls. Cause if you're going to make a hundred calls to get beat up by 95 people and only five of them are good, like you're only going to do that for a couple of months till you're like, man, I'm not going to make the phone calls. So we started a concierge team. And so now we have concierge agents that work in-house for us and we call mortgage professionals, past customer databases, we get qualified lists of realtors and we call them, we call financial planners, we call investment advisors, we call insurance professionals. And the number one thing that our clients come to us, that's their biggest sticking point right now is what do I say to a brand new realtor that's already producing, already sending their business to somebody else? Or what do I say to a successful financial planner in order to open up the door and get them to meet with or get them to actually send me business? And this solves that problem. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, well, first of all, I'm really, it's awesome to hear how you've evolved um, your, your value proposition and what you're doing, but that is, that is helping solve a problem for professionals. And that is exactly uh, where the future is. And guys, and that is where it is today. You know, there are some mortgage professionals that have this fintech power tech stack. 
that have built processes like the ones you've described. They have partners with people like you and platforms like you. And, and guys, they're gaining market share. You know, they're, you know, there, there are mortgage professionals in this market that are actually up over yeah. last year. Not a lot of them, uh, but but heck, if you're if you're down less than twenty percent, you're killing it. And so, um, you know, I love what you're doing. I want to learn more about that. Maybe even invite you to an interview in our community. Well, not maybe. Let's <laughs> definitely invite you um, to an interview in our community. But I I love hearing that, Chris. That's awesome. Thank you, Dave. And I feel like. One of the things when interest rates started going up and refi started driving down and everybody in the industry was freaking out and I just looked at activity like uh, so I posted on our social media yesterday I was on a plane I'm at a mortgage conference today which is why the background's a little bit weird and it was like just brainstorm out all of the different opportunities that you have to make phone calls to generate business you've got your past customers. You've got loans in process right now. You've got all the realtors that you've done business with. You've got realtors that you've done business with outside of the deals that you're doing right now. You just nailed them all. Financial planners, investment advisors, all of those. Like if you think about just sitting down at your office and making two hours of outbound communication to all of those people, do you really think you're not going to grow your business in today's environment? It doesn't matter what the interest rates are doing. It's about output and activity. Absolutely. So you get to speak with the top producers in the industry all of the time. Arguably, you're one of the most knowledgeable people in the mortgage industry. What would be your number one piece of advice for loan officers today in today's marketplace of just like, what's your number one thing to say to the industry right now? Well, I, I have to make it two because there, there really are two super important things. You know, I mean, without question, the number one thing you can do today and really going forward is to make your database your number one priority. You know, yes. that your database, the building of your database, the nurturing of your database, the delivering value to your database in the form of annual reviews, quarterly reviews, calling people when they need you and delivering advice, not price. I mean, that is the number one thing that you can do today if you want to make not only this year close strong, but next year, so strong. So super simple. That is number one. But I do think there's a number two because you, you need to have energy and it's tough in the market right now. Like, yeah. like it is, it is tough and there are less buyers and, and we need to show up more empathetically, you know, like rent shaming is not the way forward. Yeah. Uh, education is the way forward and, and realtors have it really tough. So my number one thing, uh, like call it the next two weeks uh, and I got this from Hunter Markwart. I interviewed him. It's in our YouTube channel uh, this week. Or no, I interviewed him last week, but we just put out a little two-minute clip on it. And, and it's the advice. He, he coaches. He's a coach in the core, and he coaches a bunch of loan officers. And he's saying, right now, we need to bring buy-down strategies to realtors. Like, they don't understand seller buy-down. They don't understand 2-1 buy-down. And so he's the people he's coaching – he is, of course, they use mortgage coach. And, 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 and the goal is 40 realtors in two weeks. Uh, so that's a couple realtors a day. Uh, actually, it's four realtors a day uh, where they're calling, they're having, whether it's on Zoom or in person, and they're doing education one-on-one -on -one with agents. So whatever, whatever size your practice is, maybe, I mean, four, the guys, the people he coaches are some of the biggest loan officers in America. So I don't think every loan officer can execute on 40 in two weeks, but figure out a number of realtors that you could execute on this in the next two weeks and go out and bring seller strategies to them. So uh, that's the two. So I got a number one for the next two weeks. And then I have a, a number one for the next 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. That is amazing. Dave, where do people go to get more information about, about you and mortgage coach, sales boomerang, where's the best place for people to go? Well, I, I you know, for leaders and managers, I, I try to post multiple times a week on LinkedIn, um, bringing ideas and inspiration. You know, I'm always going to be positive. Uh, for for both leaders and loan officers, our YouTube channel is, is you know, I'm trying to be Netflix for mortgage professionals, but it's all positive. Yeah. You know, nothing against Netflix, but it's not all positive. Uh, so, so it's all education, training, tactics, and strategies. And then, of course, that group that I have with um, Todd Bookspan, Mortgage Coach, Productivity Mastermind, 
is a Facebook group that we we just love to pour into people that want to want to make my advice makes a difference. Like if you resonate with, I want my advice to make a difference, you know, subscribe to our Facebook group and follow us on YouTube. That's amazing. And all of those links will be in the show notes. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead, head on over to iTunes, leave us a five-star rating and review. If you're seeing this on social, hit the like button, leave a comment with what your top takeaway was and make sure you hit the share button. We're all in this together. And the more people in the mortgage industry that get this advice from Dave, the better our industry is going to be. It, uh, rising tides rise all ships. So thank you for being part of this, Dave. Again, thank you for being on the show. Great to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Awesome. Have a great day, everybody. Hey, it's Chris. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope that you enjoyed our guest today on the podcast. This is a reminder that we have just finished taking the greatest lessons from all of our guests and packaging them together into a brief online video presentation that's going to teach you the 10 most profitable ways to grow your mortgage business. And then we show you how to automate those processes in your business with people and systems so that you get the results without you having having to do the work every day. This is quite literally a blueprint so that you walk into your mortgage business every day with pre-booked appointments with borrowers that want to meet with you and referral partners that want to send you business so that you are spending your time inside your mortgage business on the highest dollar per hour activities and you truly become the executive of your business, a true business owner, rather than just somebody who's going to a job every day and making a wage on the way through. This is an absolutely incredibly powerful training for you. And I cannot wait to hear for you to experience it. So head on over to chriswebinar.com. That's chriswebinar.com to get that free training today. Now, if you could do me another favor, if you enjoyed this episode, please head on over to iTunes, search the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast, and give us a five-star rating and review, really on any podcast platform that you're watching this on. That just 30 seconds of your time goes to help another loan officer in the industry discover this information and really help put their life and their business on track for more success. We are all in this together, and there is more than enough for all of us in the industry. So I would love if you left us that five-star rating and review. Don't forget to stay tuned for our next episode, and I'll see you then.